Hey guys, this is Christopher with another Onshape tutorial. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use constraints in a sketch. So first we need to create a sketch, and I'll position it in the top plane, although it doesn't really matter which plane it's in. So the constraints are over here, right next to the dimension tool, and you can see there's quite a few of them. I'll go down the list through each one. And before we can constrain anything, we need to create them things to constrain. So I'll just create two lines. And one way we can define this sketch would be to use the dimension tool to dimension every point and then it's going to be fully defined. But this isn't always practical or makes sense. Now this is fully defined with all of this. But we can also define it with constraints with a couple dimensions too. So you can constrain using these constraints up here. Um, the first one, coincident, just puts a point onto a line or another point or an arc. So if you click on your point and another point and click con coincident, it will put those points together and no matter what you, you do, you cannot move them apart from each other. You can also do it with your point in a line and now it's permanently positioned on that line and you can also do it with an arc and it's permanently positioned on that arc. Another way you can do that would be to just click and drag your point onto a line, onto an arc, or onto another point and it'll snap to those places and will automatically create a coincident constraint. So the next constraint is the concentric constraint which is used between two or more circles. If you select them and make them concentric then it makes their circle uh, their uh, centers in the same place. I do not normally use this because I find it to be redundant. If you can if you use the coincident constraint on their centers then it does the exact same thing and then you don't have to use coincident constraint. But it's always there if you want to use it. Next, the parallel constraint is used between two lines and it constrains them to be parallel no matter how you move them around. The tangent constraint is between a line and an arc or two arcs and it makes the line only intersect the arc in one position as you can see here it's always only intersecting in one place and you can also do this between a circle and an arc or two circles and it has the same effect. And right now it doesn't seem like they're touching, but that's just because this arc doesn't extend down here. But if it did, you would see that where it would be extended, it is touching in one place. The next is horizontal, which can either be used on a line to make it only horizontal so that it can't rotate, or you can use it on two different points and it will make those two points always horizontal of each other. And the same thing can be done with vertical except it makes the line go up and down rather than side to side. And it can also be used with two points. Perpendicular is like parallel except it puts them at a 90 degree angle you can use it between two lines
the equal constraint can either be used between two lines to make them always the same length. Now when we move one, the other one always adjusts to be the equal length of the other. Um, it can also be used between two circles. Right now they have different sizes, but if we set them to be equal to each other, then when we move one, they both move and have an equal radius. The midpoint constraint is like part of the coincident constraint. If you select a point and a line, it will make it coincident, this point will be coincident on the midpoint of this line. So no matter how big or the position of the line, that point will always be coincident to the midpoint. Next, normal. It's like perpendicular, except it is between an arc and a line. So if you imagine that there is a line that goes through the circle and it's tangent to the circle at that point, then this other line is perpendicular to the tangent line of the circle. And that is the normal constraint. Next, the Pierce constraint. Um, I'll come back to that one because it involves two separate sketches, not just a single sketch. The symmetric constraint, um, it will make two objects or two points symmetric across an axis. So if we select the two centers of these circles and then select the axis we would, that we want, now these two circles will always be a mirror image across that axis, even beyond that line. And you can also use the y and the x-axis as your line of symmetry so that they reflect across the x or y axis. And the last constraint before we go back to the Pierce constraint is the fix, which you just click on point or any other entity, and now they're black, which means they are fully defined and they can't move. It's fixed in its position. So now, um, if we leave those fixed, and they're black, we can't move them, the only way that we can move them would be to delete the fix constraint. So if you hover over what's fixed and you'll notice that there's this little icon which represents the fixed constraint. You can click on it and delete it and now the circle is blue again which means we can move it around. And same here, we can hover over click and delete and now this point is free too. And this works with all constraints. If these two constraints are parallel, or if these two lines are parallel, then they will both show up with a parallel constraint for each other. And if we hover over either of them and click on the constraint and delete it, now neither of them have it and they're free to move any way we'd like. So that's how you delete the constraints that you have already, or view them just by hovering it over. So now we will go back to the Pierce constraint. For that, I will create a spline, which is just like a curvy line. And you can adjust these to change the shape of it. But that's not really important right now. So to use the Pierce constraint, we have to now make a second sketch in a different plane. So I will choose the right plane right here, and now just draw a line. 
Now the Pierce Constraints allows us to select a point in one of our sketches and make it coincident with anything on another sketch as long as the sketches intersect. So in this case, now this line is fixed to this curvy line that we put in the other sketch. And you can see that they are in different planes, but still connected. So that is the Pierce constraint and all of the other constraints in Onshape. Now if you want to combine them with dimensions to create a part, you can also do that. So um, one use for constraints would be if you had several circles and you want them to be all the same diameter you can select them all and make them equal and then with the dimension tool you could set the distance between them and then you could just set the diameter of one and then they would all change at the same time and you wouldn't worry have wouldn't have to worry about changing each one. And if you had even more circles, that would be even more helpful. And if you wanted to change it, you could just go back in and edit this, and then they all update at the same time. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please like and subscribe.